So this is productivity and ergonomics part one. <clears throat> so uh, during pandemic and we're likely well afterwards, uh, many people will work outside the office and uh, here is what you need to do so so that your home workspace will support your work and won't wreck your body over the long term. Okay, so working from home is really a new phenomenon, but the COVID-19 pandemic has made it an unplanned requirement for many office and knowledge workers. So even as coronavirus crisis eventually recedes, <coughs> many employee employers will have discovered that they don't need large office buildings and many employees will have discovered that they don't need to be in an office in everyday setting or spend hours commuting. So many people have set up a makeshift home offices for the pandemic uh, that won't work well for the long term. So in addition to having the right equipment, the physical setup, the ergonomics of the workplace is critical, especially around avoiding <clears throat> repetitive strain injuries or what they call RSI that causes a bad setup uh, that a bad setup may cause okay so next slide so the ideal home office setup a long-term home office should be ideally be is in a separate work space in your home that is properly outfitted for work so you have to do as much of the following as you can to create an effective safe workspace for the long term so this is an example of a dedicated space which can be found in the comfort of your own home corner of your home so ideally you would use a small room that can hold a desk and computer equipment whose door uh, can be shut for the essential need to separate <clears throat> separate work life and home life just to avoid distractions most people don't have a spare space but many people can convert a guest room into a dual purpose space an office most of the time uh, and a guest room where people can just visit <clears throat> proper work height so this factor is very important. Your space needs a desk or a table at is at work height. The industry standard is 29 inches from the floor to the top of the work surface. Tall people do better with higher height and short people, of course, do better with lower height. So many desks nowadays and tables have adjustable lengths or heights, usually through their feet. But the industry standard is based on writing on paper, not using a keyboard and a mouse. So that's why keyboard trays pull out from below work surface and are typically an inch or two lower from the desk or table height. So you can see in the illustration uh, the proper posture and positioning for work height. Okay. Proper monitor height. So you, you can get a large monitor, maybe two for your home office, just as you would in a corporate office. Just avoid the cheapest monitors if you can, since this very cheap monitors uh which only display like vga or ega you know the old <clears throat> technology they can lead to eye strain over prolonged use due to their lower resolution and thus increase fuzziness so i would encourage people to buy one monitor nowadays monitors which display uh, hd like probably <clears throat> the minimum would be 1920 by 1080p so that's like a resolution okay your monitor should line up so that if you look straight ahead when setting straight your eyes are at the height of 25% to 30% below the top of the screen that way you see your shoulders level and don't hunch your back so those those are two easy ways to cause injury a good chair <clears throat> There are a lot of bad chairs out there that can injure over prolonged computer use. So dining chairs and deck chairs, for example, rarely are 
at the right height and they don't always encourage the right setting posture so be sure to get one with adjustable height that one one that can roll that provides lumbar support or back support uh, and ideally has a, an adjustable arm height an arm rest arm on an arm rest is preferable but only if you use it correctly so that means if your forearm should rest very lightly on the armrest and there should be no pressure from the arm into the armrest okay the armrest basically should remind you or your arm to stay in the right position not support its weight like a seat does or your butt so uh <clears throat> typically if you can afford though some guys to purchase a gaming chair okay but uh, as we all know uh, most of the gaming chairs they're quite expensive also so if you're not using a gaming chair though you can use other chairs which you can modify those chairs just you know to make you comfortable during work so good lighting it's very easy to underestimate the effects of your work environment on your ability to work. So lighting is often an area that people don't usually think about. So ideally you have sufficient indirect light to illuminate your workspace. So you can easily read papers and see physical objects. So overhead lighting is usually best from a seating lamp. Okay. So your indir indirect lighting means light is not in your direct field of view or reflecting off your monitor for example an outside window behind or to the side of your desk can create glare on your monitor when the shine is shining in the morning okay natural light is quite pleasant but diffuse it with shades or curtains so that it doesn't create glares so for those <clears throat> areas which light enters in the morning especially likewise make sure that your monitor's brightness is not too dim or too bright so both of which can cause eye strain so i would say too dim or too bright are subjective of course but the good rule of thumb is that the monitor's lighting intensity should be a little brighter than your ambient lighting okay so just as a little rule of thumb and that ambient lighting should be su sufficient to read paper documents without additional light. So other equipment that we may need because you're using a work from home setup, you'll need a keyboard, a mouse, of course. If you're using an external monitor, your laptop is likely off to the side in a position that would be awkward to reach to for using a keyboard and a mouse. So of course, if you're using, if you're connecting your laptop to a keyboard and a mouse, it will be already in the distance. So you'd be using the keyboard and a mouse for practicality. And also for us, if we do work from home, for my end, I would recommend also using an external keyboard and a mouse because uh, uh, tendency of a laptop is if you're using it over time, uh, the interface itself, the keyboard interface itself gets hot okay so any keyboard and mouse are fine as long as they're responsive to the touch and not the wrong size for your hands or the wrong height for your posture so for keyboard and mouse mice wireless ones save you cable mess but require recharging or battery replacement so those are pros and cons so the pro for having a wireless keyboard and mouse is that you can just take them everywhere and relocate no problem but of course the downs or the cons are you have to charge okay or you may require changing the battery off it okay and if you work in a shared space you should invest in a headset so you can you can join online conference calls with less noise speaking into your home where other people are working sleeping taking classes and so on so uh, for us of course we require for cyber backers that all of us do require a noise cancelling headset so that's the reason behind okay we should have a noise cancelling headset and i would recommend that <clears throat> uh you know for cbs really to do invest on this this is very important especially for ones who are making calls or even taking calls because uh if those headsets really are not really noise cancelling 
you can hear uh you know ambient noise in the back background like chicken chickens you know roosters in the morning so uh they don't really sound good when you're in a call okay so you may consider also if you're using a desktop not a laptop you might consider also using a search protector and a ups so the function of the ups is just you know in case of a power outage just as a quick backup it may provide like 20 to 30 minutes backup power to your computer just allowing you time just to save your work okay actually it's not a real prolonged backup source but you know just to provide you enough time to save your work because this is our, these are the cons of a desktop shortcut once you lose power uh the computer shuts down and if you're unable to sh save your work and okay that's you're done okay so for us of course if we're really fully set up especially in working with a client and there's a power outage and unexpected so that's the worst case scenario okay <clears throat> and if you live also in a stormy area okay there's a small chance that you might get a power surge could damage your computer equipment so this is very important for desktop computers uh the aps or the avr should be also be placed like automatic voltage regulator just to protect your equipment for laptops we don't need this because uh the the power cable the power block you know the one at the attached an adapter has a built-in okay avr and also if you try to buy like an extension cord or a power strip just be sure that there's a built-in surge protector okay this is an expensive insurance policy for that rare event so these are just some of the equipments that we we are using or are currently using as of the moment okay so furthermore tomorrow i will continue discussing part two for this class okay and we will uh, further tackle other factors which which will affect productivity and ergonomics and that would be okay those are additional those are plants okay you don't expect that plants really are part of it but it's part of it temperature sound color so these are like factors which we can control to improve our working environment okay and the philosophy of working from home is like you have to think that your desk is like a cockpit okay so like as you can see in the picture there's a cockpit there and the pilot just you know while sitting down they can just reach for any controls on arm's length so that's the that's the philosophy that we have to set up uh, work from home setup should be similar to that so we don't have to stand around we just you know reach it in a comfortable place so that we're productive okay so thank you so much guys for spending time to listen to my lecture and hopefully we can see each other again tomorrow for part two of this discussion thank you bye bye okay so this is part two of my uh, lecture for productivity and ergonomics okay so so we'll continue the discussion from for these uh, more essential elements as i've discussed yesterday these are additional elements for your ergonomics uh plants temperature sound and color okay and the dictum is to think that your desk is like a cockpit of an airplane so plants okay a plant um can plants help you do your work? Of course, it might sound silly, but uh, according to studies, uh, it, uh, a plant or two in your office could improve your productivity and happiness. So scientists had found that indoor plants prevent fatigue during attention demanding work. Even just having a window view of live greenery can be restorative and keep us focused. 
So if you can't see a plant from your desk, you might be missing out on a 15% productivity boost according to psychologists study at the Exeter University. This is based in United Kingdom or UK. So you can see the plants in the illustration. Uh, actually, uh, the idea there is if we see color green, it's quite relaxing to the eyes. Okay. Furthermore, for temperature, at some offices, employees regularly battle each other for control of the thermostat. So if this describes your working environment, here's some research to help you end the battles once and for all, at least if you often feel chilly. Okay, so Cornell University at New York researchers, researchers found that by increasing office temperatures from 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, or that would be from 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, workers typing errors fell below 44% and they were able to type 150% more. So I would say that 20 to 25 degrees actually even 25 degrees celsius is a comfortable temperature right so actually if we're using air conditioning our goal is not to freeze up everybody but you know just to set a comfortable temperature okay but uh, we can't deny that some people want it to set to 17 degrees and it's very chilly so does it work well for me though if that's the case Furthermore, if we talk about sound, there are good sounds to listen while working and then there's noise also. So too often we deal with the latter. At the office, especially in open offices, each people's conversation and even the keyboard clicks can be a constant distraction. Working from home, you might have to contend with the sound of your neighbor's dog barking noisy landscapers and construction workers and maybe even the sound of regular traffic outside your door and then there are also notifications that you might get from your mobile phone that interrupt what you're doing so it's hard to drown out all uh, all that when you're trying to work okay so it's very helpful to get a good pair of noise cancelling headphones or headsets as for us it is required by our company that we have these headsets and also just a nice to know information also uh having a noise cancelling headset if you're making calls receiving calls and recording them it helps a lot okay because uh it's a bit distracting distracting also to hear especially in the morning you know the roosters the sound of you know uh, outside our houses okay so we'll present proceed further with color okay color psychology is a fascinating field of study mcdonald's the famous chain okay uses red and yellow because they're high energy colors that stimulate our appetites and now on the other hand starbucks uses green to promote a sense of relaxation so your office colors may be <clears throat> subtly influencing your work days so color psychologist angela wright explains how colors makes us feel think and act so we'll start with red <clears throat> red is energizing warming and stimulates our pulses on the other hand this can also be perceived as aggressive okay if there's too much red or overwhelming red and then we say blue blue can stimulate thought and aid in concentration and communication but some might think that it is cold and unemotional furthermore it's yellow Yellow is stimulating and lifts spirits, but the wrong tone of it makes you feel anxious. Okay, just by staring at the color itself. On the other hand, green is reassuring, balancing color, but but blending on how it's used. Sometimes green can be perceived as bland. Okay. Then we go to orange. Orange is stimulating and fun, but too much of it can be overwhelming. Then there's gray. Gray is neutral, 
psychologically and can be depressing unless the right tone is used. Then we have white, okay? White gives a heightened perception of space but can be a strain also to look at if it's too bright of white. And then we have violet. Colors for cyber background, that's violet. Encourages contemplation, but too much of it can bring up too much introspection. So just a nice to know, uh, keep these color meanings in mind when choosing the paint for your home office and even when shopping for desk accessories. So what's the color of their desk, okay? Um, desk supplies in coordinating colors could help you stay focused instead of being dis dis distracted by your desk. So like, I would I would say that there were, there were, when, I, uh, when I was working back there in my hometown, uh, in the hospital, the floor is color coded okay so uh, i would also could comment that color can affect performance of our nurses back then because there was a ward there colored orange on the third floor and there was another ward colored green on the second floor well most of the time i would say that the ones working on the third floor you know their temperament towards patients because the color is color the, col the floor is colored orange they're a bit, you know, irritable as compared to the second floor nurses. They're, the floor is colored green. So most of the time, also people are cool, you know. So maybe, you know, sub subconsciously, the colors also dictate our mood and how we feel. Especially if, like, in that case, the whole floor is really colored orange, green, and something like that. Okay? Then... Proceeding on to think that your desk is like a cockpit. So the controls, the, the cockpit of an aircraft puts all flying controls and information panels needed within arm's reach for the pilot. And it leaves out extraneous information or tools that could be dis distracting. Ideally, your workstation would function similarly. Okay. Now you can see that we, ha we have to arrange things in our workstation somewhat like a cockpit where things are organized as you can see in that cockpit that's quite a clean cockpit okay for most efficient distraction free use of space so here are some tips first keep only the things you use daily within reach okay this could be a pen a notebook your phone, charging stand, your water bottle, or your coffee cup, and a microfiber cloth for cleaning your phone, screen, and monitor. Second, store everything else off your desk. Store supplies that you might need weekly or monthly, such as scissors, extra post-it notes in your desk drawers. So these things should be kept uh, under your desk or in the drawers. Okay. Next is to keep personal decorations to a minimum. So this would include personal photos, travel souvenirs, and other objects that bring us joy when we look at them. Too many of them, however, could interrupt your train of thought, and even more often so than your co-workers or your family members also do. So try limiting personal decorations to about three items or even less and moving any others to outside your direct line of sight okay so sometimes in the office you see family picture you know a picture of your wife or daughter that would be acceptable but we have to keep this on a minimum level then next hide supplies and tools strategically behind your monitor or under your desk you can still have things you need in reach, but hidden from sight. So you can mount an external hard drive, for example, to the back of your monitor, as well as cables, pens, and more. Next, clear cable clutter with ties and other tools. 
So even you can Google cable clutter and you'll find a ton of cheap tools such as Velcro ties that stick to the underside of your desktop. Okay. For me really, um, organizing my workspace, same like here, or my workstation or my desk is very important because I don't know with some people, um, some people can work with like a cluttered space, cluttered desk, it works for them, for, for me, no. Uh, it's like it's a toxic environment for me. Uh, it's very distracting and it's very stressful to to find if my desk is pretty, you know, messy and disorganized. So I don't know with some people they can work with such, but for me it doesn't work. Okay. So most of the time, like back then when I was working in an office setting, um, in the morning, you know, your desk is clear, and then once the work comes slowly you know it is slowly filled but at the end of the day at the end of the before i end my office work i would have to keep and organize the desk clean again why so that the next day when you report to the office you know you have a clear mind and not not a not so toxic environment okay so this would this page would be the summary of our lecture for two days so that's part one and part two. And as you can see in the picture, uh, it depicts a complete setup for productivity and ergonomics. And I'll be having a review, okay? So say like a warmer environment could improve accuracy and productivity. So that they say that's 20 to 25 degrees for us, it's already cold, okay? But in the US, they will consider it already a warmer environment, okay? Then choose your office colors carefully. Green is balancing, blue stimulates concentration. Okay. Another is to keep your items you need daily on the desk. So whatever you need daily need on a daily basis, you have to keep it on the desk. Consider a left to right workflow or whatever works for you. Okay. What system? Limit personal decorations. Try just three decorations. Uh, height of the monitor, place monitor 20 to 40 uh, inches from your eyes away from glare. So you should consider that the top of the monitor should level with or below your eyes. So as I said yesterday, it's about 20 to 30% at the top of the monitor, then your eyes should be like that. So like just to stretch your hand out outbound and you can see the screen, make sure that you touch like even like one third of it from the top okay then type with the wrist flat or angle downwards okay not the other way around adjust your chair and desk height so that your arms and thighs roughly parallel to the floor so feet flat on the floor so oh, we have some of us do have gaming chairs and that's the ideal for us if we're doing work from home because we're sitting eight hours a day that's the best but if we can't afford game chairs so we have to modify okay uh what else noise cancelling headphones drown out distractions so this is very important for us if you're assigned in uh, outbound calls or uh, say for me i handle inbound calls once a call comes in uh, i'm pretty sure that outside noises are kept to a minimum because i'm using a noise cancelling headset and this is very good if you're recording okay somebody talks on the side the noise cancelling feature just drowns it out okay and you can hear it on a recording another is to that natural light improves mood focus and sleep and the ideal source of natural light is like outside the window uh, or you know an overhead light uh, there should be no light near the monitor or the screen because it will be like, it's like a glare, okay? And earlier, as I said, plants can boost productivity by as much as 15%, okay? So guys, this ends my two-day lecture about productivity and ergonomics.